Hello, my name is Scott Davis. Welcome to New World Birth. This is the weekly neutrino forecast for March 6th to March 12th of 2016. And on March 6th, we have the sun. You can see it denoted here by this black circle with a dot in it. It's in Pisces. It's also in the 63rd hexagram. And on the outside of the wheel, we've got the chop mark for the 63rd number. From bottom to top, the 63rd goes yang, yin, yang. Yin, yang, yin. And then the 36 hexagram is mapped to an opening in an energy channel called a gate. And right here, this is the, thir the 63rd gate of doubt after completion in the spiral of life. All endings are beginnings. Located in the head center in a logical collective energy path in the understanding circuit called the channel of logic. A design of mental ease mixed with doubt that connects with the fourth gate of a formulization, youthful folly, the energy to beguile and succeed despite ignorance, freedom from retribution. And I found human design to be amazingly accurate in describing the person that I use as my primary tool when I provide readings. And we have the following activated gates on March 6th. We've got the sun in the 63rd gate with the earth in the 64th gate. The north node is in the 47th gate with the south node in the 22nd gate. Mercury is in the 55th gate with Venus in the 49th gate. Mars is in the 14th gate. Jupiter is retrograde, and it's in the 47th gate along with the north node. Saturn is in the 5th gate. Uh, we have uh, Uranus in the 51st gate, Neptune in the 37th gate, and Pluto in the 54th gate. So obviously not every gate activation forms a channel, but this information can be very helpful if you know your own human design chart, because some of these transits will form channels with potentials in your personal body graph. And as we begin the, uh, the week, we have one channel definition due to the transit field, with the Earth in the 64 and the North Node and Jupiter in the 47th, we have the channel of abstraction, a design of a mental activity uh, mixed with clarity until uh, March 6th. Uh, the energy of this channel is about creating something new out of something old. This is about the abstract thought uh, that's being brought into the collective consciousness through the arts, philosophy, history, and culture. This is wonderful energy for telling stories about our experiences that inspire others, uh, but bring confusion when used to resolve our own issues. Uh, the defined head center uh, brings pressure to think about things that uh, don't matter to those without. And the defined Ajna center uh, can influence people to believe that they are certain of something even when they are not. And March 6 begins with the sun in the fifth line of the 63rd uh, hexagram, uh, it, it, where the sun is exalted in the 63.5. It's described as affirmation, exalted, the authority and sincerity of purpose to pursue the same value values uh, in the new beginnings that were allowed to transcend the old, the understanding that doubts are necessary and of value. And then later on the 6th, the sun then uh, moves into the 6th uh, line of the uh, 63rd hexagram, um, and uh, this shift happens at 12, 10 a.m., so this is just 10 minutes after midnight. Uh, for this transition of the sun into the sixth line of the 63rd hexagram, uh, which is uh, called uh, nostalgia, exalted, the good sense to avoid turning previous struggle into an, uh, 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 the previous struggle into an obsession, the logic of leaving old doubts behind, detrimented revolutionary nostalgia, illogic, and the potential obsession with old suspicions and doubts. And then later on the 6th, uh, the sun then moves from the 63rd gate in hexagram and joins the south node in the 22nd, and the earth leaves the 64. Uh, and joins uh, the North Node and Jupiter in the uh, 47th gate. Uh, and this is the gate of realizing oppression, a restrictive adverse uh, state as a result of internal weakness 
or external strength or both. And this shift happens at 10.39 p.m. Eastern Standard Time uh, with the sun in the 22nd gate of openness, grace, a quality of behavior best suited for handling mundane and trivial situations. And uh, the sun is in the first line of the 22nd hexagram, uh, which is the second class ticket, exalted, the ability to accept and enjoy a uh, subordinate position, the emotional awareness to enjoy a subordinate position, detriment, the inevitable humiliation that comes with claiming a first class seat with a second class ticket, uh, where emotional energy uh, challenges the awareness and, and can result uh, uh, in uh, humiliate, humiliation socially. Um, and this shift of the sun into the 22nd gate and the earth into the 47th gate uh, means that we've wrapped up uh, the program's focus on the themes of doubt and confusion as we move into grace and oppression. Oppression tries to make sense of confusion. The 47 deals with the pressure from the past and how to resolve it. The 22nd is individual and acoustic. It's about attentiveness. It's about hearing and being open to the potential for mutation or not. It can also be deaf. Uh, there's an openness to art, music, and to breathe correctly. Uh, we can watch the movie as folks uh, with the 12th gate might be speaking romantically about making your life better. This is the cross of rulers uh, who uh, listen and educate. Uh, and of course, uh, we don't have to get caught up in the program. Uh, we can just uh, follow our strategy and authority and allow ourselves to uh, to operate correctly no matter what the program uh, has in store. Also on the 6th, Mars moves out of the 14th gate and hexagram and into the 34. Um, and so uh, uh, um, with Mars, um, it's in the gate of the power of the great. Uh, power is only great when it's display or use serves the common good. And it's in the first line of the 34, uh, the bully, the indiscriminate use of power, exalted the less negative, the resort, the resort to power as a manifestation of frustration, the energy to display power as a response to frustration, detrimented the comeuppance that is inevitably the inevitable destiny of the bully, the ever-present risk of retaliation with t power displays. And Ra talked about Mars being an extraordinary and immature energy re resource that lacks refinement and is subject to outbursts. On the 7th, the sun then moves into the second line of the 22nd hexagram, and this shift happens at 9.09 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. The sun is exalted in the 22-2 and is keynoted as charm school. Uh, the belief that st style can mask nature, exalted, the ability to successfully delude oneself and others, the ability to attract others with an a, a emotional style. And then also on the 7th, uh, Venus moves from the 49 to the 30. Um, and so we have uh, Venus uh, in human design. It's about values, morality, natural law, in which we deal with the other and the consequences of the world around us. And Venus is in the 30th gate of recognition of feelings, the clinging fire, freedom recognized as illusion, uh, uh, limitation as fate. And uh, in the first line of the 30, uh, Venus is in the line of composure. Uh, balance in the face of disorder, exalted the maximization of limitation in all cases, stability through feelings no matter what the situation, detrimented the ability to maintain composure uh, but at the expense of progress, balanced through feelings but, not, uh, but unable to let go of them. And then also on the, uh, then on the 8th, uh, sorry, not also on the 8th, uh, the sun then moves into the third line, of the 22nd hexagram at 7.37 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Uh, the sun in the 22.3 is 
the enchanter, perfected grace, exalted the form uh, of a definition and actualization of substance, the possibility for perfected openness through the alignment of emotional energy and awareness, detrimented unconscious grace and innate openness. Uh, then also on the 8th, uh, Mercury moves out of the 55, and it joins uh, Neptune in the 37, uh, and Mercury in mythology was the messenger of the gods, so this is about communication, uh, or as uh, Ra talked about it being expansion of human consciousness through communication, not just as words, but also as music. And uh, it's in the gate of uh, friendship, the family, the manifestation macro and microcosmically of the organic nature of communities. And Mercury is in the first line of the 37, the mother and father, uh, a position of inherent respect that ensures uh, the a focus uh, for uh, development of guidelines. Um, and, um, the, the exalted uh, harmony is the key to successful maintenance of, re of relationships. It's only through harmony that the beauty and values of the family can endure. Friendship is rooted in sensitivity uh, and ensures harmony. Uh, detrimented, no planet in detriment. On the 9th, the sun then moves into the fourth line of the 22nd hexagram at 6.08 uh, p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Uh, the sun in the 22.4 is described as uh, sensitivity, the modification of behavior to enrich interactions, uh, exalted, the mediumistic uh, 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 simplicity that rejects elaborate rituals, the possibility of social openness through the rejection of formality, detrimented the over-reliance on the mechanics of style that uh, can uh, abort uh, potentially significant relationships, the limitation of social openness through the need for formality. And then on the 10th, the sun then moves into the fifth line of the 22nd hexagram at 4.39 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Uh, the sun in the uh, fifth line of the 22 is described as directness, the disregard of form when required, exalted the potential inherent uh, in higher principles to successfully transgress behavioral codes, the possibility through emotional awareness to behave individualistically in social social interactions, detrimented a tendency to create embarrassing situations and uh, though inevitably successful, the often resulting uh, reputation for crudity, uh, crudity, crudity and imprudence, uh, the possibility uh, that individual behavior in, in, in social interaction will generate negative projections from others. On the 11th, the sun then moves into the sixth line of the 22nd hexagram at 3.10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Uh, the sun is exalted in the, uh, in the sixth line of the 22nd, uh, which is maturity, uh, the alignment with, exp uh, with experience of form, with substance, exalted, uh, natural and evident leadership and uh, authority, the possibility uh, that ex experience in social interaction will result in a leadership uh, capacity. Also on the 11th, uh, Mercury moves uh, out of the 37, leaving Neptune, and up into the 63rd head center. Um, and uh, as we talked about before, Mercury is about com uh, communication, and it's in the 63rd gate of doubt after completion a a in the spiral of, of life. Uh, all uh, endings are beginnings. And Mercury in the 63-1 is composure, exalted, the quality of personality where achievement is accepted uh, with equanimity and where continued development is allowed to take its natural course. Acceptance of achievement 
recession, uh, but doubt whether continued development will take place, detrimenting the tendency in achievement to immediately seek new goals at, at the risk of destabilizing what has already been accomplished. The pressure to uh, it, the pressure in achievement uh, to sit, still w doubt one's c capabilities and the immediate uh, and immediately seek new goals. And then on the twelfth. Uh, the sun moves uh, from the uh, 22nd, uh, leaving behind uh, uh, the south node, and it moves into the 36th. And the uh, earth leaves the uh, 47, leaving behind the north node and uh, and uh, the and Jupiter, and it moves into the 6th. So uh, we have uh, the Earth is in the, in the sixth hexagram. This is the gate of friction, conflict, the fundamental design component of progress, the law that growth cannot exist without friction. And this shift happens at 1.43 p.m. Eastern Standard Time with the sun in the 36th gate of crisis, the darkening and the light. The uh, rule of cycles in which decline is a, a natural but not enduring stage. Uh, the sun is in the first line of the 36, uh, which is resistance, exalted the energy and determination to persevere in the face of opposition, the uh, emotional power to handle crisis, detrimented the over-principled resistance that rather than being uh, selective in resistance and thus less at risk, uh, will maintain normal patterns and incur opposition. Uh, a resistance to change that will uh, always uh, bring crisis. Uh, and as we move from the 22nd to the 36th, uh, we enter the last gate of Pisces, uh, the darkening the light, the gate of crisis, the gate of penetration. Uh, this is desire, it, it, you know, inexperience looking for experience. Uh, this is the third gate of the uh, human experiential way uh, with the 41, the 30, the 36, and eventually we get to the 35. Um, and uh, uh, the polarity of the 36 is the sixth gate uh, uh, of friction, and which is about being open or closed to others. It's uh, described as being a diaphragm that's open or closed to intimacy. This polarity means that intimacy will have a deep conditioning force with this sixth gate and the 36th gate wanting to share an exciting experience or not. Uh, this brings us to the cross of Eden. And as the story goes, the inhabitants would get cast out of Eden. Uh, there's wealth, there's privilege, and then a traumatic event, and then it's all lost. Eden is gone along with innocence. And as we move from the uh, 22nd to the 36th, uh, we lose grace. This is a very sexual cross uh, with uh, the command upon leaving Eden. Go forth and multiply. And then also on the 12th, uh, Venus moves uh, from the 30 to the 55. Um, it, it, you know, we talked about Venus being about values, morality, uh, uh, you know, natural law, which we deal with the other and the consequences of the world around us. And uh, Venus is in the 55th gate of spirit, abundance. Abundance is strictly a question of spirit. And Venus is detrimented in the first line of the 55 uh, which is uh, cooperation, detrimented the concentration on harmonic uh, relationships with powerful forces that provide for continuity, but not necessarily advancement, the potential to harmonize with powerful forces, but not necessarily for the benefit of spirit. So I want to thank you for checking out New World Birth. The next segment of the weekly Neutrino Forecast will be for March 13th, 2016. should be available on the 12th, when we'll continue to look at the uh, influence of the heavenly bodies as they transit the sky and the hexagrams of the I Ching. You can check us out on Facebook, blog, 
blogger or YouTube. And I encourage you to share this information as videos or as text as widely as you choose. And I invite you to contact me at newworldbirth at yahoo.com if you've got any questions or you wish to schedule a reading. And if you've been thinking about getting a reading, please contact me. I would love to provide you a reading during these uncertain times. You'll need to be able to either call me in Maine in the USA or we can connect with Skype to receive your reading. We're also accepting donations to keep these reports freely available and contact me at newworldbirth at yahoo.com uh, is how I'll get you uh, instructions on how to uh, make a donation or of course as I've said before getting a reading is a great way to support us here and also get something of, of, of value for yourself. As always I'm blessed that you've taken the time to connect with my passion for these ancient mysteries and their application to our journey during this incarnation. The light in me honors the light in you. Namaste in Lakesh. And as Ra would say, love yourself. All my best to you. Look forward to connecting with you in the future.